Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. I am Chris Oviedo filling in for Diane Schumacher. This month, the beautiful game returns to Colombia. Men's soccer battles Cape Fear, Coach Troy's Dragons take on Frederick, and we'll recap the Under Armour All-America Lacrosse Classic. First, the defending Region 20, District 8 champs take the field. Howard and Nassau renew their back and forth interstate rivalry. Mike Leshner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Chris. Coach Seagroves' Dragons return to action after a phenomenal 2013 season. Howard dominated the region and advanced to the Final Four where they kept a clean sheet against eventual national champion Brookdale. All-American sweeper Lisa Bianchini is one of three returning sophomores from that team. Bianchini is now Howard's holding center mid. She's contributed a goal and an assist in her new role. Nassau enters the match ranked eighth in the nation. The Lions are coming off a 4-0 victory over two-time defending District G champion Holyoke. These schools always give each other a game. It's a top 10 showdown. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half free kick for Nassau. Helen Sabalos takes it. Tough bounce. Darcy Bazzioni's there for the save. Nassau conceded a corner during a three-on-three -three breakaway. Lisa Bianchini sends a high ball into the box, punched out by Jesse Sable. Nice touch by Carrie Baum to end the chance. She creates space for the clear. Rebecca Coglin wins the ball for Howard and takes it up the field. Keeps her head up. Diagonal to Kanifa Mullings. Excellent ball. Mullings runs onto it. Jacqueline Griffin with the challenge. Excellent defense from the Lions left back. Nikki Manning sends it up. Jessica Hawley looks to clear. Manning wins it back for the Dragons. Goes to Jen Craven. She sees Coglin make a run and serves up a tremendous diagonal ball. Coglin is onside, into the box, she scores! Superb finish from Rebecca Coglin. 1-0, Howard. Here's the finish. Coglin, one touch, she places it where she wants it and tucks it inside the near post. Howard is starting to control the possession battle. Craven takes it to the edge of the box, sends across to Coglin, hits her in the stomach, but Sable is there for Nassau. The game is beginning to open up now for Howard. Second half throw in for the Lions. Tremendous work by Craven, winning possession for Howard. She passes it off to Coglin. Coglin still alive, she moves it up to Mullings. She boxes out the defender, takes it up the field. Mullings, diagonal ball for Craven. She outruns the Nassau defender, beats her to the ball, sends it into the box, diving interception by Sable. Nice challenge by Jennifer Serna. She gets it back for the Lions. Up to Charlotte Barnum. Nassau has numbers forward. Here's a chance. Good ball from Barnum. Liz Park slams the door shut with a big time challenge. It bounces outside to Rachel Kubler, but Christy Feist is all over her. Feist with a clear. Nassau throws it in. Superb effort from Kanifa Mullings. She wins it and takes it the other way. Mullings moves it to Craven. Here comes the cross. Sable gets her hands on it, doesn't matter. Howard is offside. Howard is dominating the possession battle. Parks sends it up in the direction of Mullings. Here's Mullings driving forward. She switches the field, plays the ball diagonal. Brilliant execution on the pass from Mullings. Coglin runs onto it. She connects with Craven, and it's in. Howard takes down Nassau. 2 0 is your final. It's time for men's soccer. Howard opens the season against Cape Fear. Coach Dragonov's Dragons enters 2014 eager to end a two-year region title drought. Four players return from last year's squad. The four returners combined to score 18 goals and nine assists a year ago. Cape Fear is coming off an 8-0 win against Northern Virginia. The Sea Devils are an organized side. They're playing with confidence and have proven they can capitalize on their scoring chances. Howard and Cape Fear square off next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half throw in for Howard. Christopher Lee finds John Jones. John Jones takes it into the corner. Terrific ball to Ezekiel Ebenezer. He runs onto it. Diving save from Dakota Moore. Howard is threatening early. Ebenezer wins the ball for Howard. Gives it up to Ian Evans. Evans looks ahead. Sends it to his target man, Amar Kanugbo. He switches the field with a quick header. Here's Elliot Quinteros. Goes back to Kanugbo. Ball rolls to Evans. A perfectly timed challenge by Miles Strickland puts an end to the chance. Sam Rivera passes along the far touchline to Jonathan Hargs. 
Strickland sends it to Kip Character. He catches him in stride, and look out, Carriker's all alone. Tyler Kostopoulos flies into the box to back up his goalie. Carriker with one too many touches, giving Garrett Peters time to fall in the ball. Excellent composure by Peters. The converted forward out of Gilman stands tall and keeps the clean sheet for Howard. 14 minutes remaining in the half. Kate Fear is threatening. Rudy Silva Oliva sends it into the box. George Kartzamars goes down, and he's awarded a penalty. Nate Pace is the penalty taker for Cape Fear. He's up against Garrett Peters. He scores! Pace hits it low and hard. 1-0, Sea Devils. Second half, 50-50 ball, and Cape Fear is attacking third. Kartzamars and Zach Korn fight for possession. Kartzamars beats him to the ball and swings it in. Nate Torbert is there, but it's over the bar. Casey Fleischel is looking for Ebenezer. He's marked by Felix Lisiero. The keeper comes out to challenge. Ebenezer wins it for Howard, takes it to the corner, goes to Fleischel, can't get there, but it rolls right to Evans with room to turn. The Dragons are unable to capitalize. 30 minutes remaining in the match. A deep ball from Mohamed Jahate created a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Cape Fear. Howard conceded a corner. Strickland takes it. Carricker with the header. Beautiful delivery from Strickland, and Carricker is there for the finish. Free kick for Howard. Sam Rivera takes it. Moore goes up and secures possession for the Sea Devils. Edwin Lopez looking for Evans. Cape Fear is double teaming Evans. Brett Council gets his hand on it, goes for the clear. Evans wins the ball for Howard. Excellent work with the ball. Evans feeds it to Ebenezer inside the 18. Here comes the cross. Broken up by Sebastian Vallejo. He takes out Ebenezer in the process, but no foul is awarded. Jahate concedes a throw in. 18 minutes remaining, corner kick for the Dragons. Elliot Quinteros takes it, short to Lopez. Back to Quinteros, dangerous ball. Fleischel's open on the near post, but it's off the mark. Cape Fear picks up a 2-0 win on the road. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Mr. Quinteros, what are your thoughts after this game? Uh, well, obviously disappointed for the loss, but uh, I thought we showed a lot of promise. We showed that we could uh, improve a few things at practice and ultimately win, win our conference and make it to Nationals, which is the ultimate goal. Mr. Jones, how about you? What are your thoughts following this game? Um, we're still a young team. It's our first game together, and I feel like together we are just going to go all the way to Nationals. We're still learning about each other, still learning the runs that we need to make. But as long as we trust each other, we're going to be OK this season. So Mr. Jones, what about this team makes you think that you're ready for nationals and you're ready to win the region? Uh, we have a strong core. Uh, we have experienced players. Some players knew each other before they came to the game. So I mean, just mental toughness. And I see a lot of it on our team. So mentally, where do you think the team is right now? Uh, we're still in the beginning stages. Uh, we're still learning about the trust issues, but as long as we know each other got our back, but that just comes with experience and time. So more time together. We have a trip new. We have a trip to New York next week. You know, team bonding. We'll be okay. All right, Mr. Quinteros. There were a lot of chances in this game. What's it going to take to turn those chances into goals? I think just a lot of practice in front of in front of the goal. You know, uh, getting those crosses off in the training ground. Uh, being able to finish it in practice, if you go with that confidence from practice to the game, you should be able to uh, put it in easily. It's not much different in practice in a game, uh, the chances you get. So uh, you just got to take advantage of them when they come to you. So with your second year under Coach Dragunov, um, how has he helped you with your game? Uh, he's helped me a lot. Uh, when, I, when I started last year, I was really raw. I didn't really know my positioning. I didn't know the speed of play. And uh, slowly throughout the year, I started gaining that. And uh, he helped me a lot by pushing me. He, he, was never, <laughs> he was never too sweet on me. He was always yelling at me and stuff. But uh, that helped me because it, it made me mentally tough. And uh, it made me believe in myself, believe in my abilities. And uh, I can show that now. Gentlemen, good luck going forward. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. My next guest played soccer professionally in Bulgaria, Portugal, and Hong Kong. This is his 11th season at Howard. Head coach Stefan Dragunov joins me now. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Um, what were your thoughts after the Cape Fear match? The Cape Fear game, uh, uh, usually we study the, our opponents. Uh, we have some information, the way that they play, some key players in the team. 
And, you know, unfortunately, you know, North Carolina, way far from us to get this uh, kind of information. Uh, Division one program. Uh, overall, I think uh, we at the first game, official game, uh, the performance of the team was pretty decent. Uh, we pleased what we saw. Oh, that's great. It's great to start strong like that. Um, what strategy did you have going into the match against um, Cape Fear? Well, uh, as I mentioned, we were, you know, studied uh, uh, the teams. Uh, we had no much information about them, so we emphasized on what we need to do on the field. Uh, we try to press high as much as possible our opponents and their side so we can get the ball there and quickly uh, get some threats against their uh, goalkeeper. Um, but uh, of course we met a very organized uh, team and as I mentioned Division 1 they get some uh, scholarship uh, players that uh, they're kind of uh, uh, making some uh, uh, differences. Um, we were usually going with uh, four flat in the back uh, with uh, five midfields and one target man. That was a kind of the strategy we went against them. Okay, and um, can you tell us more about the team this year? A uh, very young team. Uh, uh, majority of the, the, the players uh, uh, kind of just coming out from high school. Um, they still need to work on their maturity to uh, adjust to the college uh, level soccer and the college uh, life at all. Uh, we get a uh, couple of players from Montgomery County, we get a couple of players from uh, PG County, and a few players from Baltimore County, of course, uh, along with uh, you know, returning players. Uh, I think it's a good uh, group of uh, players that they need more time to work together so they could gel and perform on the field. Um, how will you prepare your team to contend for the region title? Um, well, mental toughness is uh, something that uh, uh, we definitely we have to thrust and emphasize with uh, going to this uh, um, challenge that we get at the end of the, end of the season. Um, uh, it depends how we're going to do in the season, uh, where we're going to end it up, uh, what seed we're going to get. Hopefully we can be second or, or first or second, uh, so we can uh, kind of, I'm not scared from them, but avoid uh, um, Montgomery College before the final. Interesting. Well, I wish you the best in the season. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's time for women's volleyball. Howard faces off against Frederick. Mike Leshner anchors our coverage. Thanks, Chris. Mike Cerrone is here to break down this Maryland JUCO matchup. The Cougars returned three key sophomores from last year's team that finished third in the conference. Frederick is coming off a huge win. The Cougars swept the school that ended their season in 2013. Mike, what do you expect to see from Frederick? I mean, basically, Frederick is an offensive team. That's what they base their whole entire aspect on. They get out on the run. They get their points early. They get nice aces. They get their kills very well done. I mean, it's, it's just crazy how good of an offensive team Frederick is. Howard was eliminated after just two matches in last year's district tournament. It's been an eventful offseason. 2012 Maryland JUCO Region 20 and District G Coach of the Year Mike Katsampas is no longer with the program. Gary Troy took over a few weeks before the season, and the Dragons have responded positively to Coach Troy. They're 3-1. and one. Mike, how can Howard get the win today? Howard's got to really look at the defensive aspect of their game. You've got to watch out for the whole entire Cougar offensive line because they get a lot of kills, they get a lot of aces on the serve. I mean, overall, you got to ignite that fire to beat one of the best JUCO teams the whole entire state of Maryland. But that's what you got to look at is Katrina Katulski. She's the leader on this team. All aspects of her game are flawless. you got to lean on her for leadership. Howard and Frederick take to the court next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lane. First set, Howard serving Frederick. Emily Rabbit gives it to Victoria Kettner. Out of the back, Kettner puts it away. That is a tough ball to play, unpredictable from the standpoint of where she may go with the hit. After an early 11-4 deficit, Howard is showing some confidence. The Dragons get into their system. Caitlin Porter sets right to Katrina Katulski. She gets it to fall. A tip ball is always tricky. Katrina Katulski used it to her advantage right there. Ensuing rally, Katulski with a deep serve. The deep serve is so big because it makes it harder to pass as a setter. Frederick had a set pass right there, which led to a bad set. It gives Howard an easy chance. Brandy Kreiser hits it off the net over the block, and it's going to be a point for Howard. 6-0 run for Howard. Cougars get into their system. Denied by Kayla Brockington. Free ball for Frederick. Nice pass by Rabbit. She finds the setter. Haley Borer outside to Hightower. Hard driven ball from the sophomore out of Houston. 
Number two, Kylie Hightower is the lead hitter for the Cougars and she bases her game off of precision. With this kill, you see how she pinpoints the back corner line and rams it home for the point. Frederick serving Howard. Dug up by Katulski, she sends it in the direction of Porter. Brockington sends it over. Kettner to Boer, finds Jackie Burns on the opposite side. She's turned away by Kreiser. Howard cuts the lead to five. Ensuing rally, Kettner out of the back. Katulski with the dig, sends it right to Porter. She goes outside. Brandy Kreiser delivers a big right-hand shot. Perfect set by Porter right there. The high set gave Kreiser a chance to swing her arm fully and snap the wrist to get that ball just after the attacking line. Hightower on the serve. She finds an opening and gets it to fall. Frederick is on a 7-2 run. Taylor Bowen. Colleen went with the solo stop. A tough set made a difficult hit right there for Howard and gave an easier block for Frederick to grab that point. Frederick wins the opening set. Howard looking to respond. Kreiser goes to Bowen. Went gets it to the setter. Bohr outside to Rabbit and she tees off. Emily Rabbit grabs one of her five kills on the day with a line shot on the far side of the court. Frederick takes control of the match with a convincing 25-11 win in the second set. Free ball for the Cougars. Kettner finds Bohr. She finds Leanna Barnes on the right side. Barnes showcases her power. Howard serving Frederick. The Cougars get into their system. Bohr sets Rabbit and she pounds the ball. Frederick needs two points to win the match. Hightower serves it. Kreiser to Porter. Katulski concedes the free ball. Bohr likes what she sees on the opposite side. Barnes delivers another right-hand shot. After a flurry of points by the Cougars, the game is capped off with another cross-court swing of Barnes to give Frederick yet another dominating win. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. All right, Caitlin, this was a tough match. What are your thoughts? Um, today, I believe that we weren't mentally prepared. Uh, we've played much better than we have today, and uh, I just know that we can prove better on the court than we did today. Aspen, where do you feel the team can improve on the court, like Caitlin was saying? Definitely working as a team, because today we we wore the same uniform. I said this when we had a meeting, but we, we didn't act like it. We definitely need to prove that we are a team, no matter what the circumstances, no matter how deep of a hole we dig ourselves in. We need to get back out together, not one by one. Taylor, how about you? What are your thoughts after this one? Similar to Aspen, we really need to pull it together as a team. Forget all of the mental blocks in our game and just pick it up and play our volleyball that we've all been playing since high school or earlier. Aspen, how do you feel going into the next match? Do you want to get this one out of your system? Oh my gosh, I, I'm so ready for the next match. I think, oh my gosh, it's, it's not just an individual effort. I think everybody realized what happened today. I think everyone knows what to fix, and I think we're all going to patch it up and move on. We're, we're so ready, even though we just, we just lost, but we're ready for it already. Best of luck going forward, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks the world. For Dragons Are Update, I'm Matt Stovall. My next guest coached the Under Armour Elite Volleyball Club 15s and the Carol Vipers Volleyball Club 17-18s. This is his first season at Howard Community College. Head coach Gary Troy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, how have your assistant coaches been helping you become very comfortable here? Uh, well, actually, I've got two former players uh, that played at uh, Howard Community College. Um, Karen Athouse. Uh, she was the first uh, scholar athlete um, at Howard Community College back in 1999. And uh, this is her first year coaching, and she brings a lot of knowledge um, as far as uh, tendencies and really the tweaking uh, stuff there. She's also very intense. And then uh, Mede, she used to be, uh, she was actually on my son's team. She's very thorough, uh, very, uh, calm and uh, I think she's already related well to the players on the team so uh, I think she's going to do well. Jody uh, was in, it was our injured player she was the libero and uh, she's basically a student coach right now because she's not going to be able to play this year so she's she's been tremendous um, because she basically took hold of the program during the summer and ordered the uniforms, got a lot of stuff that needed to be done because of the absentee of a, of a coach at that time. So, um, What does your team still need to work on? Passing and outside hitting. That's our biggest uh, hit. And that mainly is getting uh, Caitlin used to pushing to the outside more. 
to get our better our outside hitters more swings, um, and then our passing. Our passing was a real. Uh, that's always tough. Uh, if you ever talk to any volleyball coaches, that's usually the one aspect that needs the most work. Uh, our passing and serve receive had a lot to be desired yesterday. It was it was really good over the um, uh, dragon tournament. What do you think made the difference, like the disconnect between the Invitational and the game last night? Well, I think part of it was my fault. Um, I introduced a couple, you know, we came in with a couple new players that have been in, in uh, that had just come onto the team, and we practiced with them, and I tried to get them into the lineup right away uh, so that we would be farther ahead down the road. Uh, Frederick's a good team, and I think the girls were a little bit unsure because I made those changes, and... They were kind of a little bit, I think, a little bit intimidated by Frederick from the standpoint of, I guess, Frederick crushed them last year. And I tried to tell them that last year was last year and this year is not the same team, but I think they had a challenge getting through that. Coach, thank you so much for coming into the show today. Thank you for having me. I was glad to come. Best of luck this season to you and the, and the team. Thank you. Up next, we'll talk cross country with Steve Musselman. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Welcome back. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first national championship. Head coach Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, so tell me, what makes Gary Smoliak a special athlete? He, he's, he was a quality athlete at high school. He went to Atherton, and um, he won counties his junior year. And cross-country running, distance running, this county is always very competitive. Last fall, he started off slow not not so fast and running slow but he's a little cautious going through some of the races but each week he was constantly improving but by, by the time we got the nationals everything fell into place he, he's an um, excellent student he's in a rouse program he's very technical very analytical so i don't need to give him a big rah-rah pep i just need to break things down for him so he understands and he goes out and he executes what are the kind of things that you break down when you're talking to a runner I talk about you know the distances. People think like for the men, they're moving up from three miles to five miles. They think, oh my gosh, two more miles. But I know we break it down the segments. We say, all right, here's your first mile. I want you to run the first mile this time, second mile this time. And we want to get progressively faster as we go through, and and you know, just have the confidence when we get to the line that we've done this type of training and workouts, and we can handle what's ahead of us. So what are you looking forward with the women's team? The women's team is is a tight group also and I think that's a lot of people look at the distance running as like individual but no we there, there's no bench everyone competes at at the same time so everyone's sharing that same experience and they're all very supportive what I like is when we were doing things the other day you know the couple of the better women finished but they waited around at the end of the the segments that we were doing like the finish line we were cheering on their, their teammates and I didn't even have to say anything they did that automatically I said okay this is very cool this is going to be a, a good team concept for us. And I said, I, I tease them. I said, I can't, I'm not going to tell Caroline to slow down. So think of it as a big game of tag, and you guys got to find her as fast as you can. That's great. So Caroline is the one, the one woman that's stepping up this year yeah, in your she, program? Yeah, she's stepping up this year. She was 16th at cross country last year. And uh, like I said, at, once we got the track, she was second to 10,000 meters. And um, when I saw the workout of the day, I could tell she'd been doing some pretty good training over the summer when we sent things out. So she's ready. Awesome. Yeah, this will be a good year for Caroline and the team. Thank you, Coach, for coming in today. I appreciate it. That, thank you. Best of luck this season. Yes. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. Playing in the Under Armour All-America Lacrosse Classic is one of the highest honors a high school athlete can achieve. And this year, the organizers added a JUCO Elite Showcase for community college players. Nine Dragons made the cut. Under Armour divided the country into three teams, South, Metro, and North. Tryouts were held in Maryland, Long Island, and upstate New York to decide each team's 24-man roster. Howard Community College players tried out for the South. Tryouts were very intense. Uh, a lot of great talent came from Maryland, uh, New Jersey, 
uh, all the way from North Carolina. Oh man, it was intense. Uh, it was a one day tryout, two and a half hours, and uh, we just, we went at it for, you know, we just scrimmaged. The regional format forced familiar foes to work together. I met a bunch of great new guys. Uh, we, uh, you know, our rival team Essex, you know, it turns out, you know, they're not, they're not all that bad, you know. It was, at first it was weird, but they're really nice guys. You get used to them. Seven different community colleges from Maryland, Massachusetts, and New Jersey were represented on the South team's final roster. Waiting for them in Towson was the Metro team. Regional pride was front and center. It's big, you know, the rivalry between New York and, and Maryland. All the kids from HCC, Essex, uh, a couple of kids from uh, Southern Maryland, Hartford, um, we just wanted to come out here and prove something. Metro scored three straight to take a 6-2 to lead. Howard's leading scorer, Dan Kaplan, responded with a goal, sparking a four-goal run for the South. Dragons' Cody Martin and Matt Morton teamed up to bring the South within one during the four-goal outburst. After Metro regained the lead, Howard's faceoff man, Anthony Pagnata, won possession and the South forced overtime. Pagnata won the ensuing faceoff, but Metro forced a turnover. Nassau's Daniel Grossman went on to score the game winner. After a short break, the South had to take on a fresh sparring partner, the North. A lot of pride, especially uh, last game playing against the North, a lot of New York, Long Island kids. Very, very skilled team, very fast, a lot of Onondaga kids, so they're always very good, competitive. Under Armour's first JUCO Elite Showcase did not look like a typical All-Star game. Coaches try to keep it as uh, normal as possible, I guess, but you just, you're getting out there, you're the only ones there, you got coaches on the sideline, so the intensity is there, and uh, you just want to play your best. The South scored six unanswered in the first half. Matt Morton and Dan Kaplan each contributed a goal for the South. Ben Carta, Jerron Brooks, Zach McElroy, Travis Harrison, Ryan Hudson, and Cody Martin played shutdown defense, holding the North to just one goal in the first half. Anthony Pagnata won four second-half face-offs to help the South close the showcase with a win. Scouts from four-year programs attended the Under Armour tryouts and games, and Jerron Brooks received plenty of attention. Coach has been contacting me from a lot of D2 schools, some Brevard, uh, Keystone, um, a couple others just can't name them right now, but they said we really like what you what did you be showed what you showed at the tryout, and uh, we really want to get in contact. Really want to see you play some more at the games, and uh, we can go from there. Our ultimate goal is to uh, go to a school that I love, and that's good for me academically, first and foremost, and athletically, where I can succeed and thrive and uh, enjoy uh, the rest of my life with that education. For now, Jerron, Ben, and Zach plan on returning to Howard. I know we have some good road uh, games next year up in uh, Onondaga on the Carrier Dome. I uh, got a road trip to Nassau, Genesee, so good competition up there. You know, I enjoy playing here. Um, met a lot of new great people, so you know, lasting relationships. Plan to return to Howard for uh, one more season uh, in the fall and the spring, get my associates and uh, see what happens from there. Wherever these All-Americans decide to go, they're sure to be valuable additions at the next level. For Dragon's Layer Update, I'm Mary Lee Adams. You can watch highlights on game day. Go to youtube.com slash hccdragonsports. Tune in Friday, November 7th for an all-new Dragon's Layer Update. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!